and welcome to Cisco Support Community Google Hangout. During our event today, our speakers will talk about CCMP, Security Certification Program Redesign. Our expert joining me today is Danny Tomic, Marketing Manager, Cisco Training, and uh, Sudarshan uh, Krishnamurthy, um, Product Manager, Cisco Support. Hi, Danny. Welcome to the handout. So uh, I'm going to talk about the a number of changes that we announced on the 21st of January this month to the security, uh, the complete security certification and training suite. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to talk about is why we actually moved into uh, making changes to the security uh, portfolio. So the first thing that we've seen, and, and I'm sure a lot of you guys are aware, is that it's front page news. These are real headlines that I've taken from around the world that basically show that cybersecurity, security, network security is an issue that uh, doesn't know any borders. It really doesn't know uh, rich or poor. It doesn't know, you know, any. There's nothing that can kind of stop the cybersecurity issue that we're seeing. There, there's no, there's no borders. There's laws are having. Uh, yeah, so, so basically it's, it's front page news and it's something that's a true and honest global challenge. And why is that the case? So let's look at how the network has evolved over time. If we think about networks 20 years ago, uh, what you would normally have is in one building you would have one secured network environment. It would be the lab and it would be climate controlled and it would make sure that all the stuff is on UPSs and if you were lucky 20 years ago you probably had another location with another network and you would connect them over a WAN link. So the idea behind security in those days, A, was primarily physical security. You couldn't get into the building without a, a security pass or some kind of access. And B, the idea was the network was like a fortress. It was like a castle. And you simply built a moat around that. So if you did have a wide area network link, all you simply had to do was put one firewall in between the, you know, the egress and the ingress of the network data, and that was your security. Now, the old worldview, fast forward 20 years later, is changing, or has changed actually dramatically, right? So what we're thinking now is everybody wants everything on the cloud. Uh, BYOD is huge and mobility. So people within your organization, it's, it's not a desire to be able to access the information while they're on the road. It's actually an expectation today. Today, your, your chief financial officer is expecting that the documents that they can access on their desktop, they will be able to access on their iPad, on their Android device, on whatever mobile device that they're using. So in that respect, security has to change as well. We don't want to have 15 policies, one policy for this device, one policy for that device. The other big change of, is, of course, the Internet of Things, which means that it's no longer devices and people that are connected to the network. We're now looking at building it out to include machines, to include animals, to include our electricity grills, grids, sorry, to include everything. Uh, so this image kind of looks at the new world network. What I'm doing here is giving you a, a kind of stark contrasting example of what the old network looked like and now what the new network looks like. So in some cases we have uh, in some farms, they've got animals that are all connected via Wi-Fi so that you can check their vital statistics, you can check their temperature, you can check what they're eating, how many calories, how they're moving around. So it's more than just devices that are within a confined region. We are now looking at any time, anywhere access from any device. So what does that mean? From a market perspective, it means the bad guys now have an increased surface of attack. There are a lot more things that they can go for that they can target in order to get into your network. So we have to move away from the old world concept that you could simply build a moat around a castle, right? That's It can no longer apply in today's world. Security has to be comprehensive. It has to cover the entire network end to end, and it has to be as much as possible administered in one location as opposed to having disparate devices and everything having different administration controls. Because in the end of the day, with security, you're, it's the weakest link that is going to be hacked, right? So when you have a chain and you have so many devices and so many different uh, policies, and hackers will find that weakest link and they will get in. So you need to eliminate as many of the variables as possible. Uh, if we look at the expectations, and I'll build this slide out, but basically uh, those in la large organizations are moving more and more towards this concept that we need to have 
rather than products uh, and individual product doing this and an individual product doing this, we need to have a security architecture. We need to look at it from a solutions point of view. So I've got a little bit of a, a quote here that basically summarises that. So market transitions, and you guys have probably seen this a few times. I'll leave it up so you can have a quick read uh, and then I'll move on. I won't actually read it out for you. But basically, the demand from the market now is for individuals that have an end-to-end -end holistic view of a network as opposed to being point product. So what have, what's Learning at Cisco done? Learning at Cisco has redesigned their existing offerings and introduced new offerings to address, address the critical skills deficit. We're looking at about a million people short in security right now and that gap is expanding. Uh, I read a, a document from Burning Glass which stated that the cybersecurity jobs are, are outpacing the market the general market for jobs at 12 to 1. So we are at a, a critical tipping point now where people really need to start uh, looking at getting educated and moving into these roles. So Cisco and learning at Cisco specifically have a training and certification suite which, which we like to think is comprehensive. We try to build something for everybody in every situation. So what we have here, and I'll move from the left to the right, uh, is we have our career certifications. So if you're not familiar with the, our program, I'll just spend a couple of minutes going through this. Career certifications is for the person who says, you know what, I want to make uh, network security my career. I want to be doing this for the next 10, 15, 20 years. I really want to build my skills and I want to make sure that you know my career will grow and I'll get more and more senior positions and get involved in more large scale projects and more architecture around security. So in order to support that, we have our career certifications program, which starts at the associate level, just as you're getting your first job and you start working through that. Then you start moving through the professional level, which will be four exams. And as you do that, you know, hopefully in line with that, your career will grow. You'll start to get into, involved in more complex projects. And then eventually you'll get yourself to the expert level. So the idea behind that is that this is a program that will grow your skills and grow your qualifications as you grow within your career, hence why they're considered our career certifications program. Now we also have specialist certification programs. Specialist certifications are targeted at specific roles. So in this case, we're looking at the network analyst role, which has started to become a new role, and I'll talk more in detail about that, but we're looking at creating, or we have created a specialist certification for that role. And finally, we've updated our offerings in product training. Now, product training exists for people who want to, say, for example, you're already qualified. You're a CCNP, but we've released a new version of something, uh, and there's a slight delta in the software. Well, product training allows you to get up to speed quickly. It allows you to upskill. It allows you to target your training to a particular device. It's also good for projects. So if you're rolling out a new box and you need to know about that, you can get into there and just get that product training on that box. So usually it's used in a project-based uh, system. It's also good for cross-skilling. We have some new uh, solutions offerings, which I'll talk about later on as well, which allow people, for example, like wireless engineers who need to know about security, but they don't need to know about everything to do with security, they just need to know about the security components that are relevant to wireless engineers. So we're creating training, product and solutions training that's targeted at those individuals. So let's talk about the CCNP security redesign first. Now, basically, as I mentioned before, we're moving away from the concept of products to more solutions-based training. So if you remember our previous, uh, the CCNP was four exams. There's firewall, IPS, secure, and VPN, and they were generally tailored around products. It was very product-centric. What we're doing is we're moving away from that to more solutions uh, training and certification. So now we've gone to Cisco Edge Network Security Solutions, Threat Control Solutions, Secure Access Solutions, and Mobility Solutions. So as of January the 21st, the new courses and codes are there. So just going into a little bit more detail, and I know you guys probably have seen a lot of this on the web already, so I will go through this pretty quickly so that we can get straight into the questions. But basically this gives us an idea of what each of the solutions training courses will provide for you. So I'll leave this on the screen just for a couple of seconds so you can have a quick read over it. 
Now, for those who are already uh, going through the CCNP security or you've got uh, some security specialist certifications, you've passed some of the existing exams and you are interested in moving uh, across or completing your CCNP, we do have some options. So the current exams, they will be retired 90 days after the announcement. So that becomes the 21st of April 2014. Uh, you can choose to complete your current exams as long as you obviously take the exam before the 21st of April or the ones that you have not taken, you can take new exams. So you will be, get, you will be getting credit for the existing passes and then you will uh, complete the new exams to, to get your certification. So nothing's lost for those who have studied or who have passed existing exams. And we do have a migration path. I'll give you a link at the end which allows you to see that in more detail. So just some key dates on the CCNP security. Uh, 21st of January we announced it. Uh, 24th of the exams went live and the courses are, are available now but they'll obviously start to come out during February and March period. So keep an eye out on them and see you know, if you want to get yourself in a five-day instructor-led class, find one that's uh, nearby you and, and go for it. And finally, the 21st of April is the last date to test for the existing exams. So now let's look at the Security Specialist Certification Program. A lot of the existing uh, Security Specialist certifications that we have were tied to the CCNP exams. So we had Firewall, VPN, Secure and IPS, which led to specialist courses. Now, of course, as we're retiring those exams, the uh, security specialist programs, we have to end of life those specialists as well. So as of April 21st, because it's the last day to test for the firewall, the existing exams, firewall, VPN, secure and IPS, uh, after the 22nd, if you are a, a specialist in any one of these uh, tracks, you'll maintain your specialist up until it needs to be recertified. There is no option to recertify it after that point, the specialist will disappear. But in spite of that, we're releasing a new Cisco Cybersecurity Specialist Certification. So this is a new role that's become more and more important over the last, uh, let's say, two years, I would say. Uh, what we're finding is there's a perception in the public's eye that, you know what, networks are going to get hacked. So when we read something in the paper that says, you know, company XYZ's network was hacked, or when you receive an email saying, hey look, we believe that our network has been compromised, can you please change your password? I think we're at a point in society and in our you know, digital age where we actually are okay with that. We're able to say, you know what, networks will get hacked, that's fine, it happens, and we'll move on with our lives. Uh, where we are less likely to be more, you know, tolerant, where we start to get upset is when a network is hacked and it's down, and it's down for one day, and then it's down for two days, and then it's down for three days, then we start to lose our patience and say, you know what, I'm fine, you know, every network is going to get hacked, it's, they're all up for grabs, but I'm not fine that you did not have anything in place to properly, you know, discover the, the infiltration and thwart it, to stop it in its tracks, right, in a suitable time frame. And that's where the cybersecurity specialist or the network analyst is at the forefront. So I consider the network analyst, and this is becoming one of the most important roles in network security at the moment, the network analyst is the frontline responder. They're like the police or like the fire brigade. When something goes down, they need to be there at the scene, they need to collect as much information, they need to do the data forensics, they need to work out, is, is this pattern in data, it looks a little bit strange, it doesn't look normal, let's go into it and find out if this is actually something that is, is something that's threatening to our network. So in line with that, we've created the Cybersecurity Specialist Certification. Again, as I mentioned, it's for network security analysts who are looking at proactive cyber threat detection and mitigation. Now, we have a five-day training course that's available for that. It's lab intensive and it uses real-world data. So we actually collect real-world data uh, and we inject it into the, the, the training lab and that's what you use so that you're actually, it's not simulated data, it's not pretend data, it's real world data so that when you go back to your office after the five days of training and you sit at your desk, what you're seeing on your you know, network monitoring tools is identical to what you had seen in training. It's about as real world as it can get. And the course and exam, they're already available and the training itself is delivered by Cisco High Touch Direct Delivery Services. Again, I've got a URL at the end that will give you a link to more information on that. So what are the new product training offerings? 
Uh, so basically we're looking at over the course of the next few months updating and releasing new offerings uh, that will hopefully have something for everyone. Right? As I mentioned earlier, we're looking at tying in solutions and product training that aren't simply for security engineers who want to get you know, more, more information on a particular uh, device, but more solution based. So for example, if you're a security engineer who's getting involved in a big wireless uh, installation, you want to know enough about wireless to help you with your security part and vice versa. If you're a wireless engineer and you're installing a new wireless network, it, it's not it's not possible today to simply tack on another wireless device to a network. You need to understand the security implications of that. You could be creating the biggest hole in your network possible. So we're offering these or creating these training courses and we'll be offering them some available now, some through February, then May and April. So I've just got the list up there. You can have a quick read of those. And I guess we've got a little bit of a mapping here so that if you're looking for, for example, firewall training uh, in the past, today you'd be looking at the new implementing core Cisco ASA security courses or the advanced uh, ASA security course. Uh, SI still exists and IPS will still exist. So in summary, and I've gone through this pretty quickly, but I want to spend more time on the question and answer than on my own voice uh, and presenting. But in summary, we, for, I guess what I'm trying to show here is that we have a comprehensive approach, right? We're trying to attack it from every edge, every end, so that we can we have something for you, right? Irrespective of what your position is and what amount of security you're dealing with, we want to make sure that there's something for you. So for network security engineers, that need to design, deploy, maintain, manage end-to-end network security solutions, and if you want to develop a holistic understanding of all the elements that coexist, then you'd be going down the CCNP security pa uh, path, and you're probably already in the career certification path. Uh, for network security analysts, those frontline guys and girls, the uh, you know the the firefighters and police, as I call them, of the network world, uh, the, the people that do event monitoring, the people that do the data forensics. Uh, you would go down the cybersecurity specialist path. And finally, for uh, network security product experts or people just wanting to know more about network security products, they're managing new projects and installations and you're using Cisco security products in any capacity whatsoever, uh, Cisco product training is what's there for you. So what are the takeaways, I guess, from what I've just been talking about? One is that network security is critical. Uh, you can no longer think of it as an, an afterthought. You can't just attach devices to your network and say, okay, now they're attached, people can access them, how do I make them secure? It has to be part of a bigger embedded architectural uh, positioning. Uh, secondly, trained and certified individuals, training is, is regarded very important in security. Uh, a 2013 IDC report said that basically the projects that run on time to budget are the ones where people are trained and certified, right? Much more than in any other technology, the importance of training and certification in network security is enormous. And finally, Cisco has something for everyone, right? We're, we're trying to make sure that we get involved immediately, that we try to close that skills gap because we have an issue at the moment where uh, employers are really reaching out. It's not a financial issue, right? The employers have the money and they understand that they need to spend money in securing their network. It's a cost of doing business, but uh, they, they just can't find the suitable uh, skills and, and certified people. Hence why we're looking at making sure that we can provide as much of that training as possible to you guys to get you out there and, and get you closing that skills gap. So where do we get more information? We've actually got a launch page or a landing page, which you may have seen already, but if not, I, I urge you to go see it. It's got a lot of good information there. It's uh, cisco.com slash go slash security certifications. So with that, I'll stop talking so that we can turn it over you to, to you guys and uh, we can start the question and answer. Yeah, we do have a lot of questions on our event page. Um, so which one you guys want to start with? Yeah, we can uh, we can start answering them. Um, so there is. Can we go from the bottom, maybe, or uh, let's start with the bottom. Um, so there's a question. 
on what exams are required to become certified as a CCNP security professional. I think Danny already answered that, the four exams that are required. Um, and there is a question on the exams again. Does the exam taker have the ability to go back and change or review or correct the answers? I believe the answer is yes. Uh, yeah, they can go back and review their answers and they can change it uh, if they choose to. The third question is, do the new exams have a hands-on component for each exam? And if so, approximately what percentage of the grade? Uh, three of the four exams have uh, what we call the rich media items, and that's like a hands-on component. The rest of the exams are all multiple choice, uh, but we don't disclose what percentage uh, of the questions or the grade is the rich media item. So that's against policy to disclose that. But we do have the uh, hands-on component or the rich media items. The next question is, does the new CCNP security have a design exam built in and required with it? Uh, the answer to that is there is no separate exam on design for CCNP security, but the design components are covered in each and every exam. So uh, the firewall exam or the, uh, the edge security exam, the mobility exam, uh, all of those cover the uh, design aspects but it's actually built in to the different uh, uh, technology exams and not specific. There's no separate exam just on design. The next question is on Cisco Press, and the question is how soon will Cisco Press be delivering the new titles corresponding to the new exams for CCNP security? Uh, the answer to that is it will be about six months before Cisco Press will come out with with a publication. Currently they are working with the authors to get the books written. It's not ready yet. Uh, we had a little bit of a challenge uh, in getting the, uh, the books written so we are working on it and it should be out in about six months time. And the next question is uh, again related to Cisco Press. When will the revised official certification guides be available? I just answer that and the next question is when will learning partners start offering courses for the new curriculum and associated tests the course locator currently returns zero results uh, the answer would be learning partners have already put up the uh, C new CCNP security on their websites uh, if you go to globalknowledge.com or Fastlane or one of the big learning partners that we have the schedules are already uh, up, I believe. Uh, the learning locator is something that is managed by the learning partners. They actually post the schedules on the learning locator when they are ready, and uh, they are looking at uh, a time frame of March. I think the earliest that uh, any of the learning partners are, are planning to uh, offer these classes would be, would be March. And you can see that on some of the learning partner websites. And Sadash, if I can just add to that, if you are interested in the training courses, it's a good idea just to uh, reach out to your learning partner to get the information, your nearest learning partner or the learning partner you intend to take the training from. Uh, make sure they're Cisco certified learning partners because then you get the best of the quality and, and the resources. But yeah, just, just if you just reach out to them, it'll give them an indication of uh, you know what the demand is like out there and they'll, they'll endeavor to address your questions there. That's right. Thanks, Danny. I don't believe there's any more questions uh, unless you see another question, Danny. Or uh, just scrolling through. Yeah, I think uh, we, you guys answer all the questions. Great. Okay. Um, I think that's um, that's about uh, actually that's about all the time we have uh, left for a Q and A session. Uh, if uh, the
uh, audience have additional questions, you guys can visit Cisco Learning Network as per page. The page link is listed on our event page. Uh, thank you so much for our guests today, uh, Danny and Sudarshan, for sharing their knowledge and expertise with us. It's a very informative uh, session. Also, I would like to invite you to our future events, uh, Google Hangout and Meetup. Uh, we have set it up. Uh, all the uh, event the link, pay, the event page link, are uh, listed on our uh, this specific event page too. Um, make sure you also sign up um, our Cisco uh, our Cisco support community at cisco.com. That link also is on the event page too. Again, thank you uh, so much for joining us uh, at our Google Hangout today and you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks guys. Bye.